Hey, what's up everybody? This is Meath24, and today I'm taking a look at the Inhumanity crossover event. Uh, this was the follow-up to Marvel's Infinity storyline, and deals with the Terrigen Mists leaking out of the Kingdom of Alan into the rest of the world, and the fact that there are roughly, I think they said a third of the human population has some sort of inhuman DNA in them, and so what does that mean when you have all these other people... Uh, turning into humans, going into like this uh, sort of chrysalis stasis, and then bursting out as something completely different. Uh, for some of these people, it's a little less drastic. They have, you know, some weird bigger form, or they have, like, there's one girl who has feathers. Uh, but for the most part, she still looks human with other people who take on a far more alien and bizarre sort of form. And I think that's a good sort of parallel to the Adeline royal family anyways, whereas... You know, Triton and Gorgon are more animalistic and sort of exaggerated in their design, whereas Medusa and Black Bolt and Karnak look more human. The thing that uh, I should say right off the bat here with this series is you see all the Inhumans here on the front. You get Karnak kind of crashing through uh, the picture there on the front of Black Bolt and Triton and Medusa and so on. Uh, the name of the series is obviously Inhumanity. Uh, the back here we have Medusa and the whole description of this series and kind of everything uh, explained about it to me before I picked it up was that this is going to be dealing with the idea of inhumans breaking out across the globe, which is true. However, this does not deal with the actual main cast of the inhumans hardly at all. Uh, they're there at the very beginning, and it's really cool when they're there, uh, but beyond that, it's a lot of loosely connected subplots that frankly aren't that interesting. And uh, I think I should just throw that out there right off the bat that this series to me was kind of ho-hum the whole way through. I was really hoping for something cool as a follow-up to Infinity, and I don't know that I was ever expecting anything quite as bombastic and, you know, intense as that series was, because that dealt with some really weird uh, theoretical science stuff, some big space opera uh, qualities, and so to follow up on that and make it just as good um, or better was going to be really hard, and I understand that. Uh, to say I was disappointed in this series would not be much of an exaggeration, but to say it was one of the worst that I've ever read is not not accurate at all, I don't think. It's just, the thing about this series is it gets so confused with its identity. Um, I can pull off the cover sleeve here and you can see what we have going on underneath. Um, basically the front and back of the uh, hardcover there beneath the sleeve is the explosion of the Kingdom of Adelan. And I mentioned we start off with the Inhumans there. Uh, we have sort of a, a prologue uh, explaining, you know, what happened in Infinity and how that's going to play into this series. Uh, I think it's a great intro. I think that from there it just constantly gets confused about what it wants to do, where it wants to go with the story. It feels like there's a lot more content in here that would make sense for a companion series than for the proper series itself, uh, which is weird, because we have that bit about the Inhumans, then we jump into Hulk and some of the Avengers for a while, then we jump into uh, the current Spider-Girl and this search for her teacher and kind of how things deal with AIM uh, there for a while. Then we have a weird little spin-off storyline with um, some of the X-Men mutants running into the in, in, in new Inhuman. And that's the one part of the story that I felt like was completely pointless to this, was the X-Men being in there. Because if it, they, they sort of set it up almost as if it's going to be like, oh yeah, we're going to have the um, X-Men clash a little bit with the uh, Inhuman that they run across, in the sense that, like, they're trying to explain to him how they're not that different, even though he believes they are completely different. And it's a cool setup for a conflict that never goes anywhere. And that's that's really just it. It's a one-off uh, moment there. We have some kind of forgettable villains across the course of this. And it's not like there's one consistent villain. Like, with Infinity, even though it was... Um, a, a, an organization, rather, like the builders were sort of a group, a collective. It was 
this consistent force that they were always up against. And that was cool to see how they had to change their tactics, how they had to sort of adapt to fight this bigger force, uh, as well as deal with the ramifications of sort of the, the Shattering of the Multiverse from the end of Age of Ultron, and how that's impacted uh, all these convergence points over the course of the story. Um, that particular bit about the convergence points comes up again at the very end of this, um, and I wouldn't say this is really spoilerish because it doesn't... The weird thing about the series is there's no, like, concrete ending. It just sort of teeters off with, like, well, we solved little conflicts and we solved little issues that people had, but we never solved a bigger scenario here um, because I don't know that there was so much of a problem with the, the whole idea of the Terrigen Mist breaking out to the, uh, the general populace, and there could have been. There could have been sort of uh, riots and uprisings, but all we really, really get is scientific research. Uh, the ending does go back to the Infinity Convergence Points storyline, and I don't know, like, what I'm supposed to get out of this. If it's setting up for something greater, if we're going to do more with the Infinity storyline later on, if it's setting up new villains, or if it's just like, yeah, this is what happened on a different version of Earth. Um, because part of it takes place in the 616 universe, part of it takes place in another universe, and the whole idea of the Convergence Points was that when two worlds come to a head one of them has to be destroyed, or they both will. Um, I do like the, the whole storyline of some of the uh, younger mutants helping out with the uh, sort of social ramifications and the, obviously, physical uh, destruction to the city since Adelan fell, and sort of their own experiences with what it means to be a mutant and how these new inhumans, uh, specifically the youth that have turned into humans, how they're going to deal with things. I thought that was really cool. Um, there's sort of this text message slash chat room thing that's going along the top, uh, which was, I don't know, maybe a little bit forced, but it wasn't the most hokey thing I've ever seen. Um, the weirdest part about this, though, is that, like, instead of going bigger scale, it seems to keep getting smaller scale. We start off, like I said, with the Inhumans. Then we go to the Avengers, the proper Avengers. Iron Man, Captain America, Wolverine, all them. And, yeah, Spider-Girl's kind of hanging around with them, but it, it is a lot about the Avengers as well. Um, then we go to, like I mentioned, the, the X-Men, um, as well as, and not like the main X-Men, mind you, uh, those are, like, there's the one-off with the main X-Men in the one city, but, um, that I mentioned where they run to the single Inhuman and then nothing's done with that, but then we have those younger X-Men, which are, like I said, presents a unique perspective, but then we also have sort of the, um, the everyday heroes, the kind of um, Luke Cage's heroes for hire friends um, opening their own department of the Avengers. And that focuses way more than I would like it to on um, Superior Spider-Man. And even towards the end, he gets his own little storyline, which, again, feels more like spin-off slash companion material. Um, there's a bit with Daredevil and Hank Pym and Doombot, uh, as part of the Avengers AI, which, again, was interesting, but I didn't really know where it was going. It is one point late on that does um, connect again to the Inhuman stuff. Uh, Medusa comes and, and comforts this new Inhuman and sort of welcomes them into the the family of, of the Inhumans, but it's just, like, there's so much going on here, and it doesn't feel like they know what to do with all of it. It feels like they should have picked, you know, two of these storylines and run them for the entirety of this thing. I wouldn't say it'd be, you know, the most interesting thing that Marvel's done with their crossover events the past few years, but I think it would have been more focused and more satisfying uh, had they done that instead of throwing Spider-Man in the mix, and now Spider-Girl, and now Luke Cage, and now the X-Men. It, it just jumps around way too much for, for anything to get accomplished. Um, which is really unfortunate because this collection is is almost as thick as uh, Infinity was. So you're looking at 600 plus pages worth of comic here, uh, and that's that's quite a bit. And for me to end this feeling like I didn't get a concrete story out of that, I just got a bunch of little kind of side stories that didn't end up amounting to much of anything is disappointing, to say the least. Um, I do like the art style with it. I don't mind the character progression for some of the stuff. Like I said, the Younger X-Men storyline, I think, is is pretty good. Um, the Avengers personalities are great. I think that 
Spider Girl's okay. Like, she's not a super interesting character to begin with, but the way they present her isn't a super whiny teenage kid. It's this kid who's concerned about her teacher going missing, uh, and the Avengers helping her kind of find find her way in, in that uh, sort of, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's a combination of, like, conflict with, with uh, the individuals who are responsible for her teacher's disappearance, and also... Uh, sort of self-discovery in a certain way with her uh, kind of coming to terms with what it means to be a hero versus her own previous understanding of what a hero should be. And so that's fine and all. Uh, it just... Something about this just, just does not work all that great for me. There's just too much going on, not enough uh, rounding out of all these points... And like I said, the ending, it just sort of drops off. It's, there's no real solid conclusion. Um, that last chapter, dealing with the incursion points again, it, it's just confusing to me. Uh, there's, there's no indication of whether it's setting up for something else or if it's um, just pointing back to, hey, this is how we got here. I was really hoping for more with the Inhumans, as I mentioned. Uh, they sort of tease at the end of Infinity that Black Bolt was kind of going kind of to go off on his own there, and you don't see him, like, at all in this series. He's mentioned at the beginning. Um, of the Inhumans, Medusa and Karnak are the only two who really play any sort of important role. And as I mentioned, it's at the very beginning, and then Medusa shows up later on with uh, Hank Pym and Daredevil. But uh, beyond that, if you were expecting this to be about the Inhumans, which, truth be told, I kind of was, or even about the, uh, I don't know, the, the new Inhumans coming together and sort of creating their own sort of culture, whether it was separate from Adelan or some branching off of Adelan, that's not even here. It's just sort of individual cases of Joe Schmo and Susie What's-Her-Face uh, dealing with becoming an Inhuman or knowing that their family members are becoming an Inhuman or something entirely unrelated to the Inhumans as a whole. Uh, the villains are not that exciting. They're a bunch of sciencey groups that want to research for their own selfish purposes and yada yada. So it's it's just not that impressive of a of an overall product to me. So that I I like some of the the stories. I think that those would have stood fine as like individual trade collections. As like this is the Inhumans tie in for the X Men or Inhuman sorry Inhumanity tie in for the X Men. This is the Inhumanity tie in for Avengers and Spider Girl. What have you? Um, I think it would have been probably a smarter move to I don't know distribute those as, as, as separate things or to figure out how to divide this Inhumanity storyline better as proper Inhumanity and companion stuff. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.